Hello, my green students. I hope we are uh, all okay. Uh, welcome back to our session today. After the last session where we had introduced the concept of uh, issuing of shares, more so our specific area of concentration was on uh, the rice issue. So I think uh, we are very familiar with the uh, main concepts that you must always tend to have at the back of our mind. So therefore, that should take us straight to the question here that I want us to handle. Remember, we had already uh, analyzed this question in the previous class. So basically, this is uh, what you are required to do, believing that you can all see this question of ours here. It's a question that we had analyzed in the previous session. So you can also still analyze it and uh, we work it out then uh, quickly. So these are what you are told, that uh, Hisa Limited has 1 million ordinary shares outstanding at the current market price of 50. So already I'm giving the market price per share. The company requires 8 million to finance a proposed expansion project. So that is to say that there is a new project that is coming and I have to finance it and the cost of financing this project is 8 million. The board of directors has decided to make one for five rice issue at a subscription price of 40 per share. So I'm giving the offer price of this rice issue that you need to make for every one for five. We will have to, uh, of course, that is a proportion of the shares that each person will be holding. So we need to make, uh, uh, of course, a figure. We need uh, the offer price will be 40 per share. The expansion project is expected to increase the firm's annual cash inflow by 945,000. So that is to say that uh, the annual cash inflow of the firm, uh, that is, uh, of course, it is expected to increase by 945,000. Uh -huh. Whenever we've seen any form of cash flow, of course, uh, the concept of discounting should always come into our mind. Then you also told that... Uh, Information on this project should be released to the market together with the announcement of the rice issue. So here we are required to, the company paid a dividend of 4.5 in the previous financial year. That is the dividends that we paid. The dividends together with the company's earnings is expected to grow by 5% annually. After investing in the expansion project, okay, required, the first thing that the examiner wants us to compute is uh, the price of the shares after the commencement of the rice issue but before they start selling at x right so simply all the examiner wants us to do is to determine the combined price uh, that is uh, that is of course uh, the uh, talk of uh, the price that our shares were selling before this rice issue the combined price that is what exactly what the examiner wants us to determine and uh, therefore, in that case, uh, we also told that uh, to compute the theoretical extract price of the shares, remember these are the concepts that uh, we had looked at, compute the theoretical value of the rice when the shares are selling uh, rice on. Then uh, also, I'm also required here to determine the, what would be the combined price per share if the new funds are used to redeem 8 million 10% debentures at par. Assume that. Uh, the cooperation, assume a cooperation tax rate of 30%. Of course, that will bring us to the concept of tax shield. So, uh, given that question, we can squeeze it down here and see what we'll be having, believing that uh, once squeezed here, it will still be visible. So, the first thing that the examiner wants us to determine here, we've seen clearly that this good examiner wants us to determine the cum right price, Okay. And for us to determine the cum right price, you must always recall this case that for me to determine the cum right price, price that our shares were selling just before the rice issue, uh, this case we are talking of, of course, our current market price of the shares, market value of the shares, we are going to add the net present value per share. You're going to add the net present value per share. That is what you are given. And clearly, I can see that our good examiner already had given us the market value, the current market value of the shares. You are told that they were trading at how much? The current market price of the share. We can clearly see that our good examiner has given us the current market price of the share which is 50. Our shares were trading at 50. Therefore, 
what about the NPV per share? So remember for us to determine NPV, if you can always recall, for us to determine NPV, we normally tend to talk of what? The present value of the cash inflows, present value of the cash inflows, present value of the cash inflows, minus what our initial investment, or in this case, cost. Initial investment or our cost. And for us to determine the NPV per share, therefore, I must have what? NPV, net present value for cash flows, we divide by the number of shares. This will give us the NPV per share. That will give us our NPV per share. So breaking it down, let us see what we'll be having. Do you have the present value of the cash inflows? Yes, we are told that our cash will, this uh, project will generate an annual cash flow, an increase in annual cash flow of how much? 945,000. So whenever I've seen that, and uh, in this case, remember, we weren't given any number of years or so. So therefore, that should take us to this other concept of determining the present value, of determining the present value, where we normally tend to talk of our cash flow. Cash flow, we are going to divide by our cost of equity. Cash flow, we divide by our cost of equity. The amount that I'm having we divide by our cost of equity. So cash flow, we are given, yes, we should be talking of 945,000. And therefore, at this point, my good students, we should be able to determine our cost of equity. Because recall, the examiner didn't give us our cost of equity. So the good question that I'm going to ask you, my good students, is do you still recall how to determine cost of equity? Remember, these are some of the items that we had looked at earlier on. Do you still recall how to determine the cost of equity? Of course, the dimension of cost of equity is something that should always be at the back of our mind, where we normally tend to talk of what? KE. Recall, KE. We normally tend to talk of our KE, taking our D1 of our market, uh, talk of our, uh, our D1, of course, our, of our PO, that is our PO, market value, minus any flotation cost that we'll be having or any discount i should not forget to multiply by g and right now i know my good students we know very well that the same case is as if we are saying the one the same as say we are talking of the o one plus g of course into uh p o uh, minus f minus discount times what times g that is something that we must always tend to have at our fingertips this concept of, uh, remember we looked at a cost of our capital, right? This is very key. Also at this point, this is very, very key. Okay. Once we have that, let us determine our cost of equity, my good students. So cost of equity here, we can agree and say that my cost of equity, we should be having our D1. And our D1 in this context, uh, I'm told we had uh, the current dividends, or rather the dividends that we just paid which I'm told that uh, we paid a dividend of how much? Look at uh, the second last paragraph. The expansion project is expected, uh, no, that one, actually the last, uh, the last note. The company paid a dividend of 4.5 in the previous year. So you can agree and say that this is our 4.5 previous year into one plus growth rate. In this case, growth rate, we are told that the company expects to have a growth rate of 5%, 0.05. All this you are going to divide by what was our market value. Uh, PO, in this case, I'm having 50. And we didn't have any flotation or discount. Then we multiply by our, we actually, we add by our growth rate. Uh, not multiplying, but sorry, this one is add, right? We add. This one we add. We add by our growth rate. We add by our growth rate, which is 0.05 which is 0 0.05. My tongue probably had said, uh, add, but then you, I can, uh, I've written a uh, multiplication, right? So basically that is plus G, that is plus G, sorry. So therefore, once we have this, what can we have? Of course, we should be talking of, uh, uh, let me pick my calc. Where is the calc? 
So you're going to talk of uh, 1.05 times 4.5 divided by 50 plus 0 0.05. In this case, I'm getting my KE. KE, I'm getting it to be 14.45%. Right? Once we have our cost of equity, that will be simple because the other element that I need to do is there to determine my present value. And to determine our present value, we are given the cash flow. What were we given as our cash flows? The cash flows, we, can give, we are given annual cash flow of 945,000. We divide by our KE, which we determine our KE to be 14.5%, 0 0.1, 0 0.45. Right? So that should give us what? This should give us 945,000. Divide by answer. I'm getting 6 million. So my present value of our cash flow uh, 6 million. 539792. Right? Present value. So once you have our present value at that point, Recall, my main aim is to determine our NPV. So my NPV, therefore, we should be talking of how much? Our NPV, we should be talking of our present value, which is 6 million, uh, 539,792. We less what? What is the expected outflow? How much do I need to invest? In that case, we are told that we needed to invest how much? 8 million, right? The company requires 8 million. That is what we needed to invest. So I'm having minus 8 million here. So we're thinking of 8 million. So therefore, we can agree and say that our NPV, I should be having minus 1, 2. I'm having an NPV of minus 14, 16, 208. So definitely this is a negative NPV, right? Which clearly shows no desirable. Therefore, uh, after we have determined that, I don't know why I'm used to this, therefore nowadays a lot. NPV per share, NPV per share, we should be talking of the NPV that we determine, minus 1460, 208, right? Recall this, we divide by the number of shares. How many shares were we intending to raise? The number of shares according to our question, the one that we were intending to raise, we were intending to raise 1 million ordinary shares. So divide by 1 million here. Divide by 1 million. So therefore, we can agree that NPV per share, NPV per share, we should be talking of divide by 1 million. It should be having a figure of a negative uh, 1.4602, which is just the same as saying one negative 1.5. Now, look at our Cumbrite price, which we had written there earlier on. Cumbrite price, for us to determine our Cumbrite price, I should be talking of my Cumbrite price will be Cumbrite price. We are talking, of course, of the current market price per share, which is 50. I'm going to add by the NPV per share, which in this case will determine our NPV per share to be minus 1.5. So therefore, what will we be having as our, what will we be having as our combined price? I should be talking of 50 minus 1.5, 50 minus 1.5 to give us a figure for much, 48.5. 48.5 so that would be our combined price 48.5 the prices that our shares were selling just before the aspect of uh before the right issue before the right issue so that is what you should be having mm -hmm. i believe that that is uh, very clear i believe that that is very clear we proceed to the second uh, question here second question I believe that this question is visible, my good students. So second question, these are what you are asked. 
compute the theoretical extract price of the shares theoretical extract price of the shares theoretical extract price of the shares and i believe by what we saw the other time in this case that would be easy right because extract price we said uh i'm required to compute our theoretical extract price here so number two the examiner wants us to compute Theoretical extract price. Theoretical extract price. Which to compute theoretical extract price, you can recall. I should be talking, of course, of uh, the number of, uh, this is a number of uh, existing shares. We multiply by, of course, the, uh, that is, of course, the market price per share. We are going, of course, this case to add our new shares times the offer price we divide by the existing shares right we divide by our existing we divide by our existing shares so therefore what will we be having here we are talking of course of uh, the theoretical x right price i'm talking of number of existing shares number of existing shares number of existing shares we are going to multiply this one, of course, by what we are referring to as a market price per share. Market price per share. We add, believing that that is visible, we add the new shares. That is, of course, uh, number of new shares. Number of uh, new shares. Number of new shares. We multiply by the offer price we multiply by the offer price we multiply by the offer price we are going to divide all this remember this is summation we are going to divide all this by what by the number of existing shares number of existing number of existing shares we add number of the new shares number of uh, new shares number of new shares number of new shares basically that is how we can determine our theoretical x right price that's how we can determine our theoretical x right price that's how we can determine our theoretical x right price so having mentioned that i think we can proceed and determine it i think we can proceed and determine our theoretical x right price here so therefore my theoretical x right price which can which refer to it as a px number of existing shares how many shares did we have how many shares did we have let us check our question here <coughs> number of existing shares So number of existing shares we can clearly see that uh, we are given a number of existing shares i'm looking at that note so that you can just go through it directly so one million shares actually is uh what uh, we needed to raise right uh he's uh, limited as one million ordinary shares outstanding that is what we are having right now at the market price of 50 shares so in that case we can agree that i'll be having what i'll be having of course uh, 1 million existing shares so that is uh, my existing shares is uh, 1 million 1 million okay we multiply by the market price which was uh, which was uh, 50 correct we are going to add number of the new shares. What will be the number of the new shares? In this case, we are told that. Uh, in this case, we are told that uh, the board of directors has decided. The board of directors has decided. The board of directors has decided to make one to five rights issue at a subscription fee of forty. At a subscription fee of forty. So basically, we are talking of eight million divided by forty. That should give us how many shares? 8 million divided by 40. 
that should give us 200,000, right? 200,000. So a uh, number of the new shares, I'm having 200,000. We multiply by the offer price. Offer price in that case, of course, you are given what? C, it is 40, right? 40. It is 40. So I'll just be multiplying this one by 40. By 40. Because that is what you are given. To take us back to the 8 million. Then you are going to divide all this by what? You are going to divide all this by the number of existing shares, which is 1 million. We add number of uh, new shares, which is 200,000. So therefore, what will be our theoretical x right price? What will be our theoretical x right price in that case? What will be our theoretical x right price, my good students? We should be talking, of course, of uh, 1 million times 50 plus uh, 200,000 times 40. We divide here. That is, of course, uh, we divide by... 1.2 million i'm getting 48.33 so in this case you're having 48.33 we're having 48.33 so that should give us what our theoretical extract price that should give us our theoretical extract price uh-huh believing that is flowing you might see that is a lot of task, but it's very kind of uh, easy, right? So long as you've mastered your formula correct. Let us proceed to the next uh, item. What are we required to do in the next item here? The next item you're told to compute the theoretical value of the rights when the shares are selling. Uh, when the shares are selling, when the rights uh, shares are selling. Basically, uh, that case, recall, we had looked at that. 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 Where we mentioned that any time I'm talking of uh, theoretical X, uh, that is uh, the value of uh, the rights, where we should be having, of course, the market value. In that case, we should be talking, of course, of our market value of the shares market value of the shares minus what the issue price minus the issue price minus the issue price minus the issue price mm -hmm. minus the issue price so therefore in that case what will we be having what will we be having market price of the shares times the issue price i think that that is easy because you already have determined our issue price here which is a theoretical x right right theoretical x right price so I think that will be easy. I think that will be easy because this is what we'll be having. Allow me to raise here. Uh, we had looked at that earlier on. We had looked at that earlier on. So here the examiner wanted us to determine that other part of uh, that is of, of course theoretical value of rights when shares are selling. Theoretical value. Theoretical value of shares. Theoretical value of shares. Theoretical value of shares. Theoretical value of shares. Theoretical value of rights. Theoretical value. Theoretical value of uh, rights when shares are selling. When shares are selling. That will be simple. That will be simple, my good students, because at this point, whatever that you'll be looking at, will only be considering, of course, a, a market price of our shares minus our x right price. X right price, X right price. Whereby in this case, market price of the shares, of course, was 50 minus X right price. We're determining it to be 48.33, right? 48.33, which basically that should give us how much? 50 minus 48.33, 50 minus 48.33. 
that should give us 1.67 so it should be having 1.67 theoretical value of the rice when shares are selling as simple as that as simple as that okay proceed to the last part of the question this question was quite okay last question what would be the cum right price per share if the new funds are used to redeem 8 million 10 percent debentures at par so in this case of course uh in this case, of course, I'm brought to the concept or to the idea where we need to determine where we need to determine our if at all I'm taking debentures. If the debentures are redeemed, not issuing of shares, but if we take debentures. And we are told that uh, what will be the cum right price per share if the new funds are used to redeem 8 million 8% debentures at par. So basically, in the event that I'm having uh, debentures, in this case, this time round, we need to issue, or rather the cum right price, uh, compute what would be the cum right price per share if the new funds are used to redeem 8 million 10% debentures at par. So therefore, that will be easy because just like uh, the other item that you had looked at first, this is what you're supposed to do. But this one, this time round is debentures, right? So to do that, cum right price, in the event that we're issuing debentures, cum right price if debentures are issued. 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 This will be easy. Because uh, we should be talking of uh, we should be talking of the cum right price to be aspect of uh, cum right price cum right price of our shares cum right price of uh, our shares cum right price of the market value for shares we should be talking of course of the current MPS current market value of our shares. We are going to less present value interest tax shield. Present value interest uh, tax shield lost. Present value interest tax shield lost. Simply because, remember, at this point, I'm going to enjoy the concept of what? Of that interest tax shield. That interest tax shield is always a component of tax in the interest. A component of tax in the interest. A component of tax in the interest so to be the, our interest tax shield that's the first thing that we need to do because already we do have the market price where in this case our market price won't change market price of the shares you're given 50 so it's upon us to determine the interest tax shield interest tax shield interest tax shield you just say that it is just that component of what interest times the tax rate interest times our tax rate will give us what our interest tax shield so therefore in our case what was our interest we told that we are going to redeem uh, 10 uh, the debentures the 8 million that is what we need to raise which we are going to redeem the debentures and these debentures will attract an interest of what 10 percent so what is the tax on that interest what's the tax on the interest was a tax on the interest we should be talking of course now this one i'll be paying uh, 8.3 times 0 0.10 times 0 0.3 clearly you can see my interest tax shield i'm getting a figure of 240,000. we we're getting our interest tax shield of 240,000. once we have that case the other key element that you need to determine of course is the present value what will be our present value here what will be our present value 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 here mm -hmm. so our present value of course of uh, the interest tax shield the same case as we looked at it i need to raise here 
the same case as our what you had looked at earlier on. Remember the other time when you started the question, the present value you say that if not given, we'll always be taking, of course, the amount we divide by our cost of equity. So our present value of our interest action, present value of our interest tax shield, we're going to take our amount of interest. So therefore, I'm having the interest tax shield we're going to divide by our cost of equity. Where interest tax shield we've seen is 240,000. What about our KE? KE we had it to be 0 0.445, 0 point, or rather 14.45%. The one that we had computed earlier on, right? Recall the one that we had computed earlier on. So therefore, in this case, we can agree and say that, therefore, I should be talking of, uh, of course, I should be talking of course, uh, I uh, should be talking of 240,000 divided by that. I'm having 240,000 divided by 0 0.1445. I'm getting a figure of 1660, 1650, 900. 1660, 900. 1660, 900, 1660, 900, that is what you are having. Therefore, once we have that case, my good students, what will be our uh, aspect of uh, this is, of course, our present value, right? So it is our NPV. NPV, of course, therefore, it should be having 1660, 900. We divide by the initial cost that I need to raise of 8 million. So therefore, we should be talking of what? Uh, 16... 60 900 minus 8 million i'm getting a figure of minus 8 million so in this case i'm getting a figure of course of uh i'm getting a figure of uh, this i'm getting a figure of uh, 6.3 right so therefore we are talking of uh 240 i'm having uh 1660 900 right we are in 1660900 so therefore this is uh what we have here 166900 uh sorry for this 166900 right so see that is our present value of our interest tax sheet right so uh, once we have that case therefore we need to determine our present value of our tax shield lost per share present value for tax shield lost per share present value for tax shield lost per share so i should be talking of our present value for tax shield lost per share a present value of tax shield because this is what you're having present value of present value of interest tax shield lost right so present value of our tax shield present value of tax shield lost per share i'm having our present value which is 16900 of course you are going to divide by the number of shares which a number of shares we had what one million so basically that should give us what that should give us uh 1660900 we divide by one million to give us a uh, one point six seven which is a uh, basically aspect of uh one point six seven right one point one point six seven or we can term it as one point seven zero right so uh once we have that that will be easy because then i'll be having our don't worry more is tired right so we're looking for uh cum right price cum right price cum right price Come right price, I'm having 50 minus 1.70 to give us 50 minus 1.70. That should give us 48.3. 48.3. So that is what we should be having there. 
So uh, that question that is what you are required to do. That is what you are required to do in that question of ours. So I want us to meet in the next session whereby we are going to handle another question. To that point, guys, thank you so much.